Amen, by the grace of Christ. <coughs> let us go to the let us go to eighteen chapter of the Gospel of Luke. The Gospel of Luke, chapter eighteen. The Gospel of Luke, chapter eighteen. Then he spoke a parable to them that men always ought to pray and not lose heart, saying, There was a certain city, a judge, a certain city, a judge, who did not fear God nor regard man. Now there was a widow in that city, and she came to him, saying, Get justice for me from my adversary. And he would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, Though I do not fear God nor regard man, yet because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. Then the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge said. And what shall God not avenge his own elect to cry out day and night to him, though he bears long with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he really find faith? on the earth. The Lord here is, addresses four people. The first was a judge, a person. Another is a widow who had an open case. And two other people. It's a small picture of today. The unrighteous judge whom Christ calls unjust. His attitude is clear. He's away from God. God for me does not exist. He can't be like me, but I'm superior to God because I fear God. I fear not God at all. So in his heart, on righteous judge, he was. He had he had no um, doubts at all whether God existed. He was clear in his conscience. And then we have the person of the widow. She's introduced to us with an issue. She's got somebody who who is an adversary. Now he may might be might be having experiencing an issue that might be simply from a little tree there's in her courtyard she's, the, she's not going to God she's going to humans or her desires She's going to. They're going to a person to find justice. There are two people. The Christ uses them as an example from the Old Testament that is relevant to us today. Are there people who don't find, who don't think God exists? There are a lot of people that are supported. There are two entities that God observes. He 
Nothing escapes God's notice. And then there are two more entities. I'll uh, call them spiritual. There are two people. There are two people who have not been regenerated, have not received the Holy Spirit, but are, go are going before God. They're not going to an accidental space. They go in the house of God. <coughs> they have nothing to do with the previous two. There are, um, there are two people who believe in God and they don't trust in human hands and the one of them is a protocon and the other one is a Pharisee or a tax collector was the first one we the regenerated we are entities. We're special people of the heavens and the earth, and the earth and under the earth. But and the heavenlies are in the underworld. You are a person who has been regenerated. You call upon Christ. Christ came and regenerated you. And he brought you to a new reality. The reality that you're living in today is absolutely spiritual in union with the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Your beautiful entity, my brother. That's how those two were. That's where they believed they were. Today, the Holy Spirit focused me to those people who were in the house of God. One of them drew near to God. He's a Pharisee. We'll see his way and manner of drawing near to God. The, uh, the other one, though, is a tax collector. But the Lord, though, commented out to me. Once we were regenerated, if you remember, our own condition, we wanted to go back to our our real authentic country, the heavenlies. So I realized that I'm a pilgrim and a sojourner once I was regenerated. I believe there's no regenerated person that he doesn't forget that he's a passerby and eternity awaits him or her. I need to, so thus, I need to go and grab that eternal life and make it my own. Now, there is a beautiful path that we're walking with Christ. We heard many messages. We heard many laborers. We saw many actions by the Holy Spirit. And we were, we confirmed that we are going to heaven. Moment after we read the Thessalonians, where Paul speaks about the rapture. When he speaks and says the perishable body will receive an imperishable body and you will fly like an eagle, 
You came here today and you're waiting for that. There is a people that God will snatch, a holy, blessed people, according to the character of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's clear. I even understand. But we, there's responsibility. Now, there are two spiritual people. One of them is, is a Pharisee. Who drew near to God by saying these amazing words. I thank you. This is in verse 11 of the 18th chapter that we didn't read today. The Pharisee stood and prayed, thus himself, God, I thank you that I'm not like other men. He's got, a, he's got some characteristics that he repeats them to God, and he, in case God forgot about who he really is. Because you never know. I fast twice a week in verse 12. I'm diligent in what you'll... I'm very diligent. How many times do you pray a day morning afternoon and in during the evening if you're doing this you're very good you're diligent you're fasting twice a week that's great now you really bound it you bounded God to answer your petitions now you keep tithes now the church offering passes by me my aisle and I don't give for my uh, an offering. I am diligent and very formal. Now, now know this, we're waiting for the rapture. We're waiting for the train. And then he turned his eyes to the prodigal. Now, the tax collector, who was standing afar off, would not so much as raise his eyes to heaven. He could not dare to draw near the holiness of the Pharisee, because if you're such a person like the Pharisee, you, you enter the church with, in style, you walk with pomp, you advertise, I cannot draw near you, because you're great. I'm nothing. And God, you know how many, how, you know how easy it is for those rocks, for God to break them. You know where God finds pleasure? To the humble people. Now the tax collector was beating his breast he will not so much as raise his eyes to heaven but beat his breast saying God my father be merciful to me a sinner you know why he was unfolding the the day's events and experiences that he had accumulated or a week and he was giving an account for himself and him finding himself to be wrong and he wasn't afraid to come to the father to say please forgive me in order to say the father forgive me it is very difficult the Holy Spirit told me this today and God told me if you cannot say if you cannot say sorry to your brother if you have open issues with a person you are lying when you're saying sorry to God 
It's nice. Nice. It's nice to say I don't love him. I do not do a good job. I would love though to have be compassionate for that person. It's a different position to admit your errors, your mistakes. You know what it means to go to God and say to God, God, and be merciful to me, a sinner. And then you have no open issues with any people. He was beating his chest. Have mercy upon me, the sinner. And he was arguing with his flesh. But he was seeing him, he was dwelling in him. As Apostle Paul says, he, he, he wasn't patting himself. He wouldn't say, he doesn't pet himself to cajole himself, say, look, my sweet self. But instead, he has got a nice characteristic that God enjoys and likes. And thus, in the end, we will leave, we'll leave justified. What kind of eyes God has? Do they understood? If I don't forgive my brother, I can go to God and say, forgive him God. And if the Holy Spirit told me this to, to me today, it's for irrelevant to all of us. It's one thing to say to God, give me power, the power to forgive a person, because God sees the desire of my heart. It's another thing. It's another thing to go. It's another thing to go and contend to receive the forgiveness of God when the my least of my brethren I have not forgiven them. Now there are two spiritual people. One is a a boulder and one the other one is a, a sand element like I am today. Now Christ here teaches us what we need to do in order to go to heaven. And God asked, with whom of the two can I come into partnership and take him to come up to heaven? One who doesn't know the scriptures and he doesn't understand the character of the Lord one who doesn't understand the spirit of the scriptures, he would say the Pharisee. He would say he has boldness, he has confidence, that he's not afraid before men and God, his great spiritual standing that he enjoys. The, product, the tax collector, he is a sinner, he is a friend of the Romans, he is a lost case, people would say. With whom, though, can God partner with? Because I know, and because the Lord has opened my mind, I said, Lord, I understand. It's with the, the tax collector. Because the Pharisee possesses a, a spirit of superiority, and so you oppose him. We're good in knowledge. We know these kind of things. You're going to go and partner with custodian, with the publican, or with the uh, tax collector, because you say it yourself, Lord. And our partnership starts between God and a spiritual man in order for that person to make it to heaven. You know what God told me? it's not to be it's not enough just to be sanctification which is good of course it's not to speak to me which is of course amazing 
but to understand a very important detail not to be afraid of your weakness you have to understand up to the day the day of your rapture you will be in weakness never fear not to tell me what do you have I, what do you have inside of you what do you feel inside your heart how long has it been how long has it been to come for you to come to me to bring your issues you illnesses part for you to open your heart your heart and to share what you're afraid of the things that scare you're scared of and you're afraid the absolute dark weaknesses that you possess not to be afraid to open your heart and express everything to the Lord to present yourself naked before God how long has it been for that to happen okay, because I'm not very smart <coughs> the Lord brought me to simplicity from the Old Testament with the people that he worked with in simplicity with first the first care being to reveal who they really are if today you are into the church how many times have you said before, even though you're here today, that I can't stand anymore, I'm going to leave? How many times in the past have you said, I cannot stand them, I'm tired, the same, the same? How many times have you said, by the day you're here? Hallelujah. What's happening? When God spoke to Abraham, When he told him that this year, this day, next year, you're going to have a child. He knows that Abraham is dirt. He has nothing. The Lord knows that you are nothing, that the Lord better you with a lot of things, the brethren, the, your house, your job, your work. But you haven't understood that. Abraham and Sarah laughed. He called Moses. I'm going to go to Pharaoh. Should I go? Why did he express his weakness? Moses didn't say to God, I've killed the Egyptian. I'm like that. You know what Moses said to God? What was burning him was, he said that I am slow in speech. That's what he, Moses replied to God's invitation for his ministry. Why should I be slow in speech? Why should I be weak? Why should I fall down constantly? Why should I make mistakes all the time? Why should I constantly make mistakes instead of being the Pharisee? But what are you saying? Dare to sing this. I am slow in speech. I'm absolutely weak for the work that you have entrusted to me which is to save my soul and make it to heaven. Aaron will come next to you and he will assist you. And today I have an assistant. It's the Holy Spirit and the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm not alone. He took the form of a bond servant. And he can intercede for us because he doesn't know. I 
I mean, no, if you're a preacher. It's just you and God now. And Joseph was commended by God. And I believe. And I'm sure. Actually, Moses, I believe. When God assigned him with his ministry, he was crying during the night because he was slow in speech. That's what God wants from us today, to admit our weakness to him. He's calling Isaiah to ministry. Isaiah said, And Isaiah, in this chapter 6 of the of the book of Isaiah says, Oh, well, as I he thought he was perishing because God invited him to a holy, a blessed walk. I'm a man of unclean lips. You are deceiving yourself. Uh, it's nice to say that I'm a man of unclean lips. A beautiful woman passed by. Now I don't tease them as like you used to. But if you desire her in your heart, you're already committed adultery. It means that the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit knows what's going on. Maybe my lips would don't say anything. So I'm a man, man of unclean lips. A brother, a brother comes and I say, leave me alone now. And when, and, and uh, in my exterior, I say, come on brother, come welcome. But I don't want to bother with them. And uh, likewise, I say many things inside my heart but I don't say them on the outside. Still, my attitude is the same. But God knows what you did in your heart. When God helped me quit smoking, I used to smoke four packs of cigarettes. On the day that I was baptized, uh, like the Lord, like the Lord, uh, like I had asked from the Lord, I had made an agreement with the Lord, and I made a covenant. If you're a living God, I will do what you asked me to do be baptized the water and I'll quit smoking. I was baptized the water and when I got into the water baptized I felt an arm I felt like a sponge to cleanse me. And I had a uh, pack of cigarettes. I tried to smoke. I felt like poison. I said the cigarette is bad. The cigarette third cigarettes and I said there's a spoil and God spoke to me didn't you ask me didn't you ask me to help you quit smoking what does God make such miraculous interventions to help you quit smoking with just a little prayer God comes and intervenes with power it comes and changes you so you feel that the cigarettes are spoiled and don't have a good taste yeah that's how God acts I will admit that I am a man of unclean lips before God. What? Before God? God calls you. God calls you to do a work. To go and preach. Instead of saying glory to God. I thank you Lord. Instead of praise, instead of praising God, you're saying you Instead of saying glory to God, you saying I'm a man of unclean lips. Why does God call you to ministry? And if God wanted to do a perfect work, He would He would let an angels to bring the gospel to the earth. But instead, He uses us, who, with one hand, they could fall down sick. Not only, woe is me, 
I am undone because I'm a man of unclean lips, he says in Isaiah chapter 6, verse 5. And I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. And my ears hear so many things. Doesn't God know? <coughs> God knows the dirty things you are hearing. The cursings. God knows everything. Just tell God. Because my eyes have seen the Lord, the King. God appeared to him. He saw the angel of the Lord. He spoke to him. Listen, brethren. These, these words are not just for Isaiah. It's for all of us. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a live coal, which he had taken with the tongues from the altar. God is giving him a vision. And he touched the verse 7 of chapter 6 of Isaiah. He touched my mouth with it. Behold, he has touched your lips. Your iniquity is taken away. Your sin is purged. If you don't confess your sin, how is your sin going to be purged? If you don't confess your weakness and your sin, how are you going to be cleansed from it? God desires to hear it from your lips, your weakness and your confession. He desires from the lives of regenerated people. He wants to show He wants to show his lenience and we close the door to God. Our prayers are dead. No. Why? Don't we have any shouting, any praise for the Lord? Any cries the Lord? Why are we so silent? Why do why do the elders have to cry out to the Lord for you to cry out as well? Don't you have problems? I'm speaking about myself. You know what I'm saying this? Because I've become a former Christian when I believed and become saved with, with a brother so to me, he, he he had an old just of a car that was ready to fall apart. I would leave my customers. They would ask me to have a drink with them and I would go to have an all night or prayer. That pew over there is filled with my tears and now the pew itself asks me why don't you make me wet anymore where are your tears should I look at my life should I look at my life in case everything sorted out spiritually I'm not sick so do you think I'm becoming young instead of getting older don't I have problems in the house financial work problems do you think everything's perfect? And I'm taking account of myself and I find myself lacking. I'm counting, I'm counting, I'm counting weaknesses. You are an elder and you're sinning. By you, in your mind, in my mind, of course, I've sinned. I wish nobody else has sinned, but I've sinned in my mind. And don't I have to confess to God and shed tears before God? God showed me many years ago, He showed me a dream. He showed me that I was in a platform ready to get on a train with. It was a perfect suit. It was a very expensive suit. It must have cost thousands of euros. From the shoes all the way to the shirt, the tie. And I had a suitcase out of alligator skin. And on the bulletin boards, 
the rapture express it was going to come at that time I was waiting for the rapture uh, and some somebody at one point a person came a person came to me sat next to me and said what are you waiting for I said for the rapture what is that kind of attire you're waiting for the rapture with this kind of suit you're gonna go to the rapture it was the best suit I could wear on. What do you have in your suitcase? I opened my suitcase. I had more suitcases. I had more, sorry, um, more suits. And the person said, no, we can go, sir, like this. The rapture experts leave. They come back changed. And all of a sudden I saw myself with where I used to wear that beautiful suit, expensive suit with the, with the alligator skin. I, fi I found myself with an old suit. It was torn in the ankles, knees. The tie was a half a year old tie. The shirt was very torn apart. The shoes were warmed out I could feel the floor underneath my foot the sole has already be worn already be worn down and the suitcase it was was a mess then a, ma a man came again and asked me, what are you waiting for I said a rapture oh you're dressed very nicely for this what do you have in the suitcase and the suitcase it was full of uni work uniforms and at that point I heard the train coming where are you going brother with the with the spirit of superiority you haven't learned well I see sisters uh, that really slap the children you don't have you come with a spirit of superiority to your brother you know what beautiful it is to say the Lord have mercy upon me the sinner and you haven't even apologized to your your child but again you haven't apologized to children after you slapped them you know you still haven't reconciled uh, rec you haven't reconciled with your brother you even, but even though you feel you're right and maybe you're right you still insist on having that attitude of the righteous person. We are sinners and we deprive the glory of God. We are like Isaiah, Abraham, Moses, Apostle Paul, dare to say the Corinthians. He never said Peter in his weakness denied Christ. <coughs> he doesn't compare his he's speaking about himself. He doesn't compare himself with Peter. Last of all the Lord after his resurrection appeared to the uh, 12 disciples apostles he considers the 12 apostles to be superior to him and Apostle Paul looks at himself and says he appeared to me the last of all as if I was a miscarriage why do you call yourself a miscarriage because they're the least of the apostles. You know why? Because his conscience was bothering him. Because he had not seared his conscience. I cannot sleep doing the night. I say I'm doing well. I do not owe to anyone. I have everything. I have sorted out everything. I'm doing very well with all the brethren. Once brother... Thodorus once he, when I came in uh, he came in to me and said and he said my brother Kavida I forgive you I forgive you 
What is he saying to me? I is initially I laughed, the sin, but then the sin got serious. What are you forgiven for what, brother? I cannot tell you, but I forgive you. Is it f a funny thing? Is he a character, funny character, a quaint character? And night went to pray, Lord, why does he forgive me? It's not what does he forgive you for. What are you doing? You walk in the church. You think you're the best of all. You think you're the cream of the path of the church. <coughs> Sometimes yeah, we knock other people in the church. It reminds me of the Russian airline. Air the air attendants, they used to hit you and push you over and we never say excuse me. Sometimes brothers or sisters come over is coming and bump over you and they don't even say excuse me. A Christian is kind. He says excuse me. You don't go next to the person. You don't go to the other person and bump into him and say, don't say anything. You hit on your brother. The other person was bothered when you hit and bumped into him. You making gestures. Not like the with kindness and gentleness, with respect. The other person, the person, the other person, he does, he can't stand for too much. Just look to be polite. If we cannot do this, ask the Lord to make this such a person. Apostle Paul said, ah, oh, like a miscarriage. I'm not worthy to be called an apostle. He explains, because I persecuted the church of God. I'll tell you something. Himodos Teos is here, and I've never said this before. A few, year, a few years ago, we came to Mr. Stinger, and I hate him. I went come to the coffee. Do you know that I'm still crying for this every night? I cannot overcome it. How did I hate him? How did I... Uh, 24 years old, man, and I hate him. That's more what Apostle Paul was thinking. Oh, I'll persecute the Church of God. He, wa he was arresting Christians and was taking them to prison. And now he became like one of them. And his conscience was still bothering him. But when was he set free? When he said it to the Lord. When does God look from you? Those hidden, those hidden, those are so serious, they're so serious for my soul. And I don't say to the Lord. I wish God conveyed to me to say the things that I need to say as He told me to convey. Nothing is more serious from not opening the last door, which is this thing that we read about. I am slow in speech. This is what burns me. It's an obstacle for Moses. It's not for God. Lord! I, the, the pitiful person, found to serve you. For Isaiah, this is very serious. Paul, who was the miscarriage of the church, Stop thinking about this. It's over when he used to persecute the church. May the Lord bless us. Amen.